Hi everyone, in today's lesson I'm going to show you how to prove that two functions are inverses of each other. Here's the textbook definition. Let f of x and g of x be two functions. f of x and g of x are considered inverses of each other if both f of g of x and g of f of x both equal x. So what this notation means here with those double equal signs means that this and this both have to equal x. So if this definition is a little bit confusing, let's talk about it in other words that are a little bit simpler to understand. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to compose f of g of x, which is this piece. Then you're going to compose g of f of x, which is this piece. And if they both equal x, then the two functions are inverses of each other. If they both don't equal x, then they're not inverses of each other. So let's see if we could do example number one. So it says, determine algebraically if f of x and g of x are inverses of each other. Only an algebraic proof will be accepted. Okay, so let's map this out first. So the first thing we want to do is find f of g of x. And then the second thing we want to do is find g of f of x and we want to see if they both equal x. So first one, f of g of x means that I'm going to throw this function in for this x. So we have one third x plus two. We're going to put in the three x minus two. And now we're going to distribute this one third into here to simplify it. So this will give you x minus two-thirds plus one. These are my like terms. Trust me on the math here. It's four-thirds. Okay, now we're checking the other side. So now we're going to put the f function into g. So we're going to put this into this. So we have 3x minus 2 and we're going to plug in one-third x plus 2 and then minus 2. So again distribute. So you should get x plus 6 minus 2 and then x minus or plus 4 because these two are my like terms. Now both of these did not equal x so since they don't equal x they're not inverses of each other. So in conclusion we can say no f of x and g of x are not inverses of each other because f of g of x equaled x minus four thirds and g of f of x equals x plus four thirds. You could even write here, they're supposed to be x. They're supposed to equal x. Okay, let's see if we could do the next page. Okay, so same type of problem. We want to see if they're inverses of each other by proving it algebraically. So the first thing we want to prove or complete is f of g of x. Okay, so let's do that first. f of g of x. That means I'm going to put this g of x function in for every x I see into the f. So the f of x function, if you want to write it down, is x plus 3 over x minus 2. And I want to substitute g of x, which is 2x plus 3 over x minus 1. So everywhere I see an x, I'm going to put 2x plus 3 over x minus 1. Minus 2. Okay, I'm going to pause here for a minute just so that we could see it. This was what took place of this x, so I have to put it here and here. So it's this plus 3, and then this minus 2. Okay, so now we have to somehow simplify this. And in order to simplify this, we're going to look at the top first separately, and then the bottom separately, and then put them together. So do you agree that I could put 3 over 1? and then maybe 2 over 1. In order to add these two fractions, I need to make a common denominator. 
So this x minus 1, consider to be its own thing, so this needs an x minus 1, and this needs an x minus 1. So let's rewrite these. We're going to have 2x plus 3 over x minus 1, plus, we can distribute, 3x minus 3 over x minus 1. We can keep simplifying. Now when you add fractions, once the denominator is the same, you just write it once, and add the tops. So 2x plus 3x is 5x, and 3 minus 3 cancels. Okay, now let's do the same thing with this side. So we need a common denominator. This is considered its own thing. So this needs an x minus 1, and this needs an x minus 1. So we can rewrite this as 2x plus 3 over x minus 1. Again, distribute, so plus a negative 2x plus 2 over x minus 1. Now again, the x minus 1 stays, and let's add our numerators. So 2x minus 2x, or plus a negative 2, cancels, and we're left with 3 plus 2, which is 5. Okay, we're almost done. Now we need to somehow simplify this. Remember that when you're dividing two fractions, the rule is keep, change, flip. Okay, so how that works is we're going to do the work. I'll do it up here in this corner. So we're going to keep the 5x over x minus 1, change the division to a multiplication, and flip the last fraction. So x minus 1 over 5. Now we can cross off any top with any bottom that's the same. So this 5 and this 5 can cancel and I'll just be left with x. So that tells me that g of f of x, this guy right here, equals x. So that's a good thing. That's what we wanted it to be. Now let's see if we do it the reverse way if I'll get the same thing. So now we're going to do g of f of x, and I want to see what this equals. Put a box there for later. Okay, so see if you could set it up just how we set it up here for f of x. Pause the video until you've done so. Okay, here's your answer. Okay, so just to recap, I'm putting this x plus 3 over x minus 2 in for both of those x's, so that's why I have them here. So let's focus our attention on the numerator first. We need to multiply this 2 to this fraction. So technically it's like you're multiplying a 2 over 1. So just a refresher, when you multiply fractions together, you're multiplying the tops, then the bottoms. So the top you're going to distribute, so 2x plus 6. The bottom you leave is x minus 2, because x minus 2 times 1 is x minus 2. Then we add the 3. Now we need a common denominator, so just like before, this gets an x minus 2. And now we could write this as 2x plus 6 over x minus 2 plus, distribute, 3x minus 6 over x minus 2. Okay, I think I'm going to finalize it up here. So we keep the bottom. And the top is 2x here, plus this 3x is 5x, and then 6 minus 6 cancels. So I've simplified my numerator, this piece, to this. Now let's talk about the denominator. So again, we need a common denominator. So this needs an x minus 2. So we could leave the x plus 3 over x minus 2, which is this piece. Now be careful with this negative 1 here, because it's like you're adding a negative 1. So you have to distribute that negative 1. So it becomes a plus negative 1x plus 2, because you're distributing a negative times a negative. That's all over x minus 2. So we keep the bottom, 
and add the tops. X and negative X will cancel, and 3 plus 2 will add to 5. So again, we have to keep, change, flip. So let's keep the 5X over X minus 2, change the multiplication to division, and flip. So these cancel, these cancel, and I'm left with X. So I can go ahead and put that in there. So look, they both came out to x. So what that means is, yes, f of x and g of x are inverses of each other, because f of g of x is, came out to x, and g of f of x came out to x. OK, I know this was a lot of algebra to swallow, so please make sure you are looking through this and jotting down questions to ask me in class. Uh, but the real pro um, point of this lesson was to know, to prove an inverse, you have to figure out that f of g of x comes out to x, and g of f of x comes out to x. If you understood this, then don't worry, we'll practice the rest of it in class tomorrow. Alright, thank you.